Hi, my name is Christina. I'm an addict. Um, I'd like to start off by saying that um, nothing throughout the past 17 years of my addiction was glamorous. Uh, I didn't sell drugs. I didn't make a lot of money, and um, it was a very big struggle. So, I uh, I was born to um, some very wonderful people. They were uh, married and they had professional jobs. Um, I was raised in a Christian household. My mom was completely straight and my dad was um, in his own kind of recovery from being a bad boy as he was younger. Um, they loved me very much and they said I love you a lot. However, they um, they never taught me the basics about life. Um, they never showed me how hard the world could get. Um, they never told me how hard I had to work for something. And uh, they, all, they told me to always be nice to people even when they were uh, mean to me. Um, my mom couldn't have kids, so when I was 14 years old, um, they adopted two children with fetal alcohol syndrome, and it was the best thing that happened to me so far, because all I wanted was um, to have siblings and have people, because I had been taking care of myself since I was six years old, because they would work long hours at the hospital. Um, when I got into high school, that was probably the hardest time for me. Um, I was transferred to a new school and I didn't know a single person there. Um, I was bullied very bad. Um, I, was, I was called like the high school slut, I was the whore, and it was because I had made out with a popular girl's ex-boyfriend, and it just really blew out of control. Um, that was really hard on me because I didn't have any friends to talk to, and I couldn't tell my parents because I just had a lot of guilt and a lot of shame, and um, that's just how it was. Um, I tried to do all sorts of things to change that. Um, I became a cheerleader. Um, I started shoplifting from Nordstrom's to get really cute clothes and makeup, and I thought that maybe I could change my appearance or, um, and it would buy me some friends or anything. Um, that didn't even work, so um, I went home, I told my mom, I said, I'm not going back to that school. Um, so to my junior year of high school, she said, okay, well, we're going to homeschool you. And, and it was working out great. Um, one of the things um, about living at home with my parents was that they worked so much that I became the instant, um, the babysitter, the full-time babysitter, the house cleaner. And, um, and that's what I did. I knew my family was dysfunctional. Um, because they worked such long hours and they didn't really talk to me. We just like ate our dinner and like went to our rooms and that was that. So, um, sorry. I really thrived off when my parents said good job for cleaning, um, stuff like that. That's what I always wanted them. To, to think was that I was just a really good kid, and I was. I was a really good child growing up. I never complained. Um, I always did everything that they asked of me, and I loved the Lord, and I loved my parents, and, and I was happy, I thought. So my, when my junior year came, I decided that I was going to get a job at a tanning salon. Um, right away, I instantly clicked up with one of the girls there. Within a couple of weeks, she was like, do you want to do some coke in the bathroom? And I was, I was nervous, and, but I wanted you know, to have a friend, and so I was like, okay, yeah, let's, let's do it. Um, instantly, my, all my pain that I had from high school went away. Um, I was absolutely engorged in it, and I loved it. And 
the biggest thing still was that my parents were extremely strict people, so even like during the high school and my junior year, I wasn't allowed to stay out past 10, which is very hard when you're high on drugs and your parents are like, come home at 10. It's, it's like not fun at all. So, um, and she would go, my mom was like, go ballistic. She would call my friend and be like, where are you? And she would, you know, to the point where it was just like a total buzzkill. So I just, you know, I would go home and um, deal with that. When my senior year came around, I decided to go back to high school, but this time I went to a private school. Um, I was still using the drugs, and I was using them by myself. I would wake up in the morning, uh, do a line of coke, get ready for school, go to school, do a line of coke in the bathroom, and I hid it from everybody. Um, it wasn't something, I knew it was bad, and I didn't want people to judge me for it, but it gave me, um, it gave me the nerve to talk to people and because I was a really shy girl and I, you know, didn't have a lot of friends and it really made me reach out and it was good. Um, so my parents were still like, no, be home at this time and I was just done. I was fed up. So um, on my 18th birthday, I moved out of my house and not the way that you normally would think you would. Like I didn't pack my stuff. Like, I literally said, I'm going to go out for the day, and I never fucking came back. So what happened was I moved out um, with one of my drug dealer's um, cousins. He loved drugs as much as I did, and I was having the time of my life. I had just graduated high school, and I was with a guy. I was in love, and there was a lot of coke, and it was awesome. Um, my parents knew that I was using and they, um, you know, one day they're like, hey, we just want to come see you. We're going to come pick you up. I said, okay, that's fine. They, so they showed up at my boyfriend's house, and I got in the car, and right away they took me to rehab, right? And I was 18 years old, and I wanted to make them happy, so, like, they checked me in, and I was like, okay, bye. Well, later that day I called up my boyfriend and his brother, and they picked me up at the bottom of the hill and I was gone. I wasn't ready for it. Um, so over the next couple of years, my mom had nervous breakdowns. She um, didn't know how to handle me leaving um, and being high on coke because she had these two special needs kids and she couldn't take care of them herself. Um, my dad would stalk um, the house outside and he would come up and run up on my boyfriend and beat him up. Um, and they did everything to try to get me out of that. Um, eventually, uh, we were smoking crack, and that turned, um, turned us real bad. So eventually, I was like, told my mom, I want to go to rehab. So I went to rehab. They said, you got to leave your kid's dad. Oh, well, shoot, that's another thing. Okay, so we, <laughs> so we decided that our addiction was so bad that we thought we should have a child, because having a child it will make us um, better. We won't be strung out. So um, sure enough, I got pregnant. I was real good during the pregnancy. I didn't use, I didn't drink. Two weeks after she was born, I was high again. I was loaded. Um, so for a whole year, that continued with the drugs and having a newborn. Um, when she was one years old, I told my mom, I said, I'm going to rehab. I left my kid's dad, and um, I was good. I went to rehab, and I never touched crack again. Um, when I got out and I moved back in with my mom, um, things were really good. I, I got with another guy a couple years later, and he was a club promoter, and we used to party every night and drink. Um, he had broken his pelvic bone after he fell down the stairs at, um, at the club, and he was put on Oxycontins. And right away, he, gave, he started giving them to me. He said, try this, it'll make you feel better. And they took away my hungovers, and I was, and I was really happy with that. We, were, um, we used them all the time. When the script ran out, we were getting them off the street. And um, we were totally hooked. Um, I decided that, but we were still able to maintain things. You know, he had a job, and I decided I was going to go to medical school because I needed to do something with my life. So I signed up for medical school, and um, 
I was doing great. Um, it was really hard, so I went to the doctor and got a prescription of Adderall. And I was just, I was high, but it's what I needed to do to get me through the school. Um, so along with the Adderalls was my brother and sister were on them for their ADHD. And every time I'd go over to my mom's house, you know, I would, I would take as many as I could without her noticing. Eventually she found out and she had to start hiding stuff. Um, I became, I graduated med school and I got a position at the Salem Pediatric Clinic. Um, I was extremely high giving, um, giving newborn babies their shots and I was scared. I didn't, I didn't want to do it anymore. I was nervous, you know, doing the stuff with the kids. So I eventually got fired. Um, I was, I got really deep into gambling and Basically what had happened was, you know, my boyfriend had caught me at the bar and he came and he picked me up because he was pissed that I was using so much money. And um, he put me in the car and he started beating me up. I opened the door, I jumped out of the car while it was moving. I hurt my back real bad, I had to go to the hospital. Um, but before that, he put me back in the car, he took me home. The neighbors called the cops on me and he was arrested because he banged my face up really bad. My discs in the back were splint. So I got out of that relationship and, um, and I started drinking really heavily every day. Um, I had incidents where I would wake up in the morning with the shakes. A couple, like one time I drank mouthwash because I was just so desperate to get rid of that shake. Um, it was really hard to find the Oxy still. This had been a couple of years, and someone had told me how cheaper heroin was. So I called up um, a family member from my kid's family and went over there, and I got my first shot of heroin. And I couldn't believe that I hadn't done it sooner. I was um, completely in love. Everything that I was going through um, went out the window, and I felt like I was happier than ever. Um, I still had, I had my daughter and we would go pick up in the parking lot and I would sit there and I would shoot up in the front seat while she's in the back seat looking over trying to figure out what I'm doing. I would lock myself in the bathroom and she put her little fingers under the door and be like, Mom, I know what you're doing in there, it's bad. You know, I know what you're doing. And she would also say things to me like, Mom, I just want you to spend time with me. Um, so, um, I ended up getting a DUI and I ended up selling my car to my mom. Months later, I ended up taking the car and I went for, I went with a, my boyfriend, this other guy, to the casino for a week and my mom called the car and uh, reported it missing. So, um, I got arrested for my first UUMV. Um, I eventually got my license revoked, or so I was put on probation and they revoked me because I couldn't stay clean and they sentenced me to like nine months in jail. Um, they put me at the work center and I would have, so when I hurt myself, I got my doctor to put me on Dilaudens and what happened at the work center is my mom would go and pick up my Dilaudins and my Adderall and she would bring them to me to the work center. And me and the other girls, we would get high on them and have someone bring, drop off needles and we, we get high. Um, I ended up having a sexual relationship with one of the guards at the work center um, just so that I could get little things that I wanted. And I did that a lot um, um, with myself when I realized that there was an opportunity where I could um, have sex with somebody um, for drugs or for money, I was on it because I thought it was a good deal because I didn't respect myself and um, I thought it was easy money and that the joke was on them. So when I eventually finished um, my jail time, I, I got back on the heroin 
and I did everything that I could for money. I shoplifted, I stole money from my mom, I took her checks, um, I got arrested for a forgery from her, I got uh, multiple theft charges, I stole um, any, I pawned my mom's wedding ring, I pawned my little brother's Xbox, I mean, I even took money out of my kid's piggy bank once. So, um, and, and I had to, and I didn't really care, honestly, as, as long as I could get that bag and get that stuff out of my mind, it was okay. Um, I started doing meth when I, um, when I got, gotten out of jail. Um, I had gone to Hooper before to get off the heroin and it was extremely difficult, but I did it, but only with the help of meth. And when I got on the meth, um, I would bring like a lot of tweakers over to my mom's house and, you know, we'd be out for days, you know, the story, you know, multiple lies, out for days, and I could not stay home. Like, whenever I used drugs, the streets called my name. And I fucked a lot of people over, and um, people did not want me in their lives. Um, my mom had just had enough, had about enough of my bullshit, and she's like, you need to go or I'm gonna call the cops. I ended up putting a knife to my mom's throat and threatening her. Um, if she did that. And when I came back out of the room, I gave her a hug. I said, Mom, I'm really sorry that I did that. And a couple of minutes later, the, the police showed up and they arrested me. So, um, sometimes I had money for a hotel room, but eventually that ran out. And so sometimes I would just walk the streets. Um, and I walked the streets a lot and you know I got in some really dangerous situations with complete strangers um, where I should have been dead you know um, I got picked up by to get rides from people you know just like hitchhiking and on a particular night I got in a car with a guy and he drove me around he didn't want anything from me and he was like do you want to go on vacation with me to like Hawaii or Mexico? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, all right. So he took me to Walmart and I went in and I started to get some stuff. And when I came back out, he was gone. And um, he, all my shit was in his car. And um, <laughs> so I had left. And two days later, homicide shows up at my kid's dad's door looking for me. And uh, they took me in. And they wanted to know everywhere, everything that I had done for the past 72 hours, and I was completely honest with them. I told them that I had been using drugs and, you know, that I was doing these, th these things. And when I got to the part where I told them that I got into the vehicle with this guy, they said, yeah, well, he's dead. And um, what had happened was when I got in his car, he went to his house to grab some money. And I was, as I was sitting in there, um, he was killing his wife and three kids all under the age of four. And I had no idea that that was happening. So when they showed up and they told me that they had found his body um, in another town with a gunshot bullet to his head and he had also had a broken ribs and he had a broken arm. So I had to take um, they had arrested me on suspicion because they said all my fingerprints were in the vehicle. So they had arrested me because they knew I was using drugs and I was on probation again. And I took three lie detector tests and I cooperated with police. And um, what had, the, the surveillance had shown that he had left five minutes before I walked out of Walmart and they said, you should have been in that car and you should have been dead. So, um, that was really spooky for me, that whole situation. Um, it had later come out that he was, um, he had narked on some people and he had to testify against these people and that he was in protective custody and these people had come and they had killed his family and then they had killed him. So police, um, the news were at my door, they wanted to do interviews 
And it was a really scary time because I was really afraid of my life. Um, so um, it made me crazy. I, um, I still couldn't go back to my house. I was still on the street. I was using drugs still. Um, I had mental breakdowns where um, the pe police had to come and strap me to gurneys and take me to the psych units because I thought that, you know, these people who had killed them were after me. Um, shortly after that, I had gotten with another guy, um, and he had taken me to Jervis, and this guy had started, um, he manipulated me with religion, and so he made me think that he was like this ultra-powerful guy, and that nobody loved me, and what he wanted to do was he wanted to steal cars and burg homes, and that's exactly what we did. He would, um, he would make me go and steal cars with him. And when I didn't want to do it, he would punch me in my gut. One time he punched me in my face and my tooth went through my lip. Um, he'd make me walk miles with him in the mud just to um, go and burg a house. And that wasn't, that wasn't who I was and it wasn't what I wanted to do. But he made me believe that he was the only thing that I had. Um, so I just wanted just to back up real quick here. During the heroin um, incident, I was taking my daughter everywhere with me and eventually I just couldn't do it anymore. I, um, I called up her dad and I said, you need to take Kaylin now. And, and she went with him. So through the past years after that, there was a lot of guilt. I really missed my child, and I continued. Um, I had a lot of guilt, and it just didn't help with my addiction. Um, when I was living with this guy, um, my father had passed away. Um, but what had happened was my friend had got a hold of me, and she said, get on your Facebook page, and so I did. And when I got on there, I saw a Facebook story that my mom had posted that said how my father had died three days previous, and she just um, she didn't want to tell me because she thought that I didn't care. Um, that was um, obviously an extremely hard time. My mom let me and this guy come stay with her and during that period I gave my little sister meth and I started getting her high because I thought that it would um, take away her pain from losing our dad and it would bring us closer together. Um, we manipulated her friends to go and take uh, jewelry out of their parents house and like a lot of jewelry and we ended up getting arrested for that. Um, uh, I ended up getting pregnant during this time. Um, I ended up having a miscarriage, probably from the fucking amazing amounts of drugs that I was using. Um, but we, when we had gotten arrested, I had gotten out a day earlier, and um, I had met these these gang members. <laughs> and we were pulling legs together and they had taken me. They, my dad had left this uh, extremely expensive watch to me and I had it on my wrist and they found out and they had kidnapped me and they said, we're going to, we're going to take you to the woods and we're going to kill you. And so as they had me in this house, I was writing down on the wall like who they were, or who my name was because they were getting all these axes out, they were getting all these knives out. What had happened was my boyfriend had gotten out of jail that night and somehow ended up at that house with the girl and she had seen me and she went out there um, and he, she told him, she said, they got your girlfriend and they're gonna kill her. And so he told her to go back in there and say that this other gang was going to come back and kill them all if they didn't release me. Well, what had happened was he had, him and that girl had left to go get guns and men. This is what he tells me later after I found out. So I was in the house and all of a sudden the, um, 
the house went completely dark so and quiet and they were gone um, so I ran for my life I left and I ran all the way until I um, could find a house and it was like 2 in the morning and I banged on the door and I called my mom up and I told her um, I said mom you need to come get me these guys are trying to kill me um, she called the police and the police came and they took me and they, they interviewed me but I was so scared to tell them who these people were because I thought that they would eventually come back and kill me so I didn't do anything about it. Um, I went to, so my mom had picked me up, even though I still had the restraint, restraining order, she had brought me back there. And the boyfriend had come and he picked me back up and he took me back out to Jervis where I endured tons of abuse all the time. He would punch me, beat me, bite me. Um, I had to wear things around my way so that guys wouldn't look at my ass. Um, I, I just remember praying at nighttime for somebody to come and save me because I didn't have it in me to leave and he said if I did leave that he was going to come and kill my family. Um, we ended up getting raided which was a, a fucking miracle because that was the last time that I had seen him. Um, and I was, I was forever grateful for that. Even though I had a couple charges, they knew what was going on. They knew that I was, that I was being held there by these guys. Um, we were arrested, but I had, I had gotten back out until court. And so I was on my own and I didn't know what to do. Um, I ended up calling some people that I had known who had always said, hey, you'd be really good um, if we went up to Portland and, you know, we could make some money. And, um, and so what they meant was, like, we're going to take you to Portland and you're going to work for us and you're going to prostitute and such and such. So I ended up going to Portland with these guys who um, they dressed like businessmen, but they were also under a chain of command. Um, and they, I started getting pimped out and I, they would take me out to the highway, to the trucks and I would work and at the end of the day I had to give them my money and, um, it was a very, a very, um, hard time for me. I didn't contact any family or anything. Um, when I was disrespect, disrespectful to, um, the guys. Um, he would, he'd be like, he would tell me to strip and then he would grab whatever he could and he would beat me with it. One time it was, um, the hose extension of a vacuum. The other time it was, um, a wooden hanger from a motel room. Um, and that was my life for a while. Um, I eventually... Um, had met a couple people, a couple of the guys that I was working, and I had convinced one of them to um, take me, take me away, and I did. Um, I ended up calling my mom, and um, they, she was extremely worried. They had put out a missing persons report on me, um, and I had got, and I had finally gotten out of that situation. Um, my mom still would not let me come home, and so I was still on the streets using drugs. I never stopped using drugs. Um, I sometimes, so after that situation in Portland, I showed up at my mom's door, and I just wanted to give her a hug. And she was like, Christina, you just, you can't be here. You know, she's like, you just, you can't be here. And I had to go. You know, all I wanted was to be with my family, but they didn't, they didn't want me there because I was using. So I, um, I had to go back to court for um, the theft charges and I had gotten arrested for 
um, another UMB because when I had come back from Portland, I didn't know how to get back, and so I, you know, I stole a car and I had gotten caught that time, and so I was absconding and I was out of friends, and finally, you know, I got picked up by the cops and I, um, I got sentenced to 26 months in prison. I served 18, and. Um, it was a really good time for me to be in there. I cut all my hair off like a boy. And I also found out that I had hep C and I was really sick. So um, when I got out of prison, um, my mom was willing to work with me. I, uh, I got a inheritance when I got out of prison because my grandparents had passed away and I started using um, right away after I had got done off my probation. I got in some more trouble with these other guys and I got scared for my life. And my mom was like, you gotta go back to rehab and I did. I went back to Bridgeway and did, did it and it was the best time that I really got good for myself. Um, I had a relapse after that, and um, it took everything out of me, and I came back, and I decided that I was going to get on Suboxone, and so I went to Amazing Treatment, I got on Suboxone, I started on 16 milligrams, and um, now I'm on 2 milligrams, and it's completely changed my life, and it's a miracle that what that drug did for me. Um, me and my mom are best friends to this day, and we have the best relationship ever. My daughter has come back into my life, um, and I see her pretty often. Not as much as I would like, but pretty often. Um, I do things like I work out, I go to meetings, I have a sponsor, um, and I just, I never, I never gave up. You know, through those years of addiction, I wanted to die so bad. And, you know, I would look at my little girl's picture and I would just be like, I'm sorry, I got to go. But I held on and this is where I'm at. I'm sorry. This, <laughs> I try to do the best I could with my story, you guys. There's probably a lot, you know, that I might have left out. Um, and you can talk to me if you want to know more about me. Um, I'm just extremely grateful that I'm here, and that's it. <laughs>